wondered how sounds make their way from the source all the way to your brain for instance take a trumpet what happens when you blow a trumpet it makes sound waves in the air sound waves are similar to the ripples created in water when you drop something into it ripples are visible but sound waves are invisible now going back to the sound of the trumpet these waves are caught by the outer ear and then they travel through a narrow pathway called the ear canal. The sound waves then reach the eardrum. The eardrum is a membrane of the size of a rupee coin. The sound waves vibrate the eardrum, which in turn vibrates three tiny bones called the malus, the incus and the stapes. These bones amplify the vibrations, meaning they increase the vibrations and send them to the cochlea. The cochlea is a snail-shaped structure and it is in the size of a pea. The cochlea is filled with a fluid and the sound vibrations create ripples here which create the waves. Tiny hair-like structures called the stereocilia are situated on top of the hair cells and are grouped together as hair cell bundles inside the cochlea. These hair cells write the sound waves and the hair bundles move. The hair bundles turn these movements into electrical signals. As the hair bundles move, ions rush into the top of the hair cells, causing the release of chemicals at the bottom of the hair cells. The chemicals bind to the auditory nerve cells and create an electrical signal. This electrical signal travels along the auditory nerve to the brain. Different hair cells respond differently to the different frequencies of sounds. Those at the base of the cochlea detect high-pitched sounds such as those of a pocolo or a flute. The hair cells towards the top of the spiral detect progressively low-pitched sounds such as those made by a trumpet or a trombone. At the very top or at the apex of the spiral, the hair cells detect the lowest-pitched sounds like those made by a tuba. The auditory nerve carries the electrical signal to the brain which interprets the message as sounds that we know, recognize and understand. The digestive system is one of the finest systems in the human body. Digestion refers to the process of converting complex food substances into their simpler and absorbable forms. But this process is incomplete without the chemical breakdown of the food. And that is a very important process. But then, which part of the body helps in this process? Well, the human body, as we all know, is a home to a host of organs. Now, there are some specialized organs that secrete enzymes which are helpful in a host of procedures in the human body. To aid in the process of digestion, there are glands all throughout the digestive system. They secrete digestive juices at various points in the digestive system. In this video, let us learn about the importance of each gland in the digestive system. The glands at the beginning of the alimentary canal are the salivary glands. Next on the list are the gastric glands on either side of the stomach. Then come the next two glands that are placed just above the stomach. Yes, the liver and the pancreas. These four glands help in the process of digestion by secreting enzymes which break down the complex food substances like the proteins, the carbohydrates and the fats. These food substances are broken down into their simpler forms. We are well aware of the fact that the process of digestion begins in the mouth. That means the chemical breakdown of food begins right from the time food enters the human body. Any idea how? Well, this begins with the salivary glands. The salivary glands are a collection of three pairs of glands. The parotid glands, which are situated here. That is, roughly around the upper cheeks. The next come the submandibular glands. Mandibular refers to jaws, especially 
the lower jaws in the mammals. Thus, the submandibular glands are located on either side of the lower jaws. Now can you try and locate the third pair of glands? The sublingual glands? Come on, go on, give it a try. Yes, that's correct. The term lingual refers to speech or tongue. Thus, one can easily say that this pair is located in the region below the tongue. The saliva that is secreted by these pairs of glands contains the salivary amylase. The enzyme salivary amylase helps in the partial breakdown of carbohydrates in the food. Which is the next micronutrient in the food? That's right, it is the proteins. Now how are proteins broken down? Well, just like the carbs, the proteins too are partially broken down to begin with. This is taken care of by the gastric glands present in the stomach. The specialized cells in the gastric mucosa of the stomach, they secrete the juice known as the gastric juice. This contains the enzyme pepsin apart from the other components. Pepsin helps in breaking down proteins. But then, the other nutrient, that is the fats, cannot be broken down. So, they are emulsified. Emulsification refers to the process of breaking down larger fat components into smaller droplets. And this is taken care of by our next gland. This gland is the largest gland in the human body. Any guesses what we are talking about? Bingo! It is the liver, of course. The liver secretes an important enzyme called the bile. But then, the bile is supplied to the liver by the gallbladder. Now, what could gallbladder be? Well, do you notice a small structure right here? This is the gallbladder. This is like the personal assistant of the liver. The gallbladder takes up the responsibility of releasing or controlling the amount of bile that is secreted by the liver, as and when required. Emulsification of facts marks the completion of the breakdown of the micronutrients in the food. Now is the time to break down the nutrients completely. And who might come to the rescue now? It is the pancreas. Pancreas is one of the most important glands in the human body. The pancreas helps in secreting digestive juices as well as hormones. Pancreas is a heterocrine gland. That is, it performs the functions of both endocrine and exocrine glands. It secretes the pancreatic juices and also hormones which help in regulating sugar levels in the blood. For now, let us focus on the pancreatic juices as we are discussing the human digestive process. The pancreatic juice is a mixture of three major enzymes. The pancreatic amylase, trypsin and lipase. The pancreatic amylase is the one that helps in the digestion of carbohydrates. Trypsin breaks down proteins and lipase helps in the complete breakdown of fats. Coming back to the process, the chyme, that is the pulpy liquid that is passed down from the gastric glands mixed up with the bile, now gets mixed with the pancreatic juices and that marks the completion of the digestion of food. As the food reaches here, the common duct carrying the bile and the pancreatic juice pours its secretions, which helps in the further breakdown of the digested food. Once broken down, all the nutrients are ready to be absorbed by the small intestinal glands. As the chyme enters the duodenum, it moves ahead. Well, this is how the various enzymes secreted by the various glands help in the breakdown of the complex food substances into their simpler and absorbable form that is, the chemical breakdown of food that we take in to form energy. And this is how the food gets digested right from the time it enters the mouth till the time it is absorbed by the human blood. Beginning from the salivary glands, the gastric glands, the liver and the pancreas, each one of them plays a major role in the breakdown of food and completion of the process of digestion.